Thanks. Good to see everyone. I uh, hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, it's always good to be here after a win. Uh, as I said the other day on Saturday, it's always hard to get wins in college football, and you got to appreciate all of them. Uh, I think there's a number of things that, that went well on Saturday, uh, and there's a handful of things that we need to continue to improve on. Uh, I think some of the fundamentals, uh, just some fundamentals techniques, always tackling defensively, uh, probably some reads, probably some throws we wish we had back, um, some routes that maybe just weren't quite what we had practiced. Um, but those are things that uh, happen weekly and things that we're going to address here this afternoon. Uh, I'm excited to get going. Uh, Drake was a, uh, I told Todd after the game, I thought they were a much improved team from uh, the 2021 season, uh, what we had seen on film. Uh, and that was not a, not a shock by any means. And so I think they'll probably have uh, their fair share of success in the Pioneer League as they move forward. Uh, this week's uh, opponent, uh, first time we've ever faced them or first time I've ever seen them, uh, talented group. Uh, they got some, some skill kids offensively, big, long receivers, uh, talented athletic quarterback um, who's a, a, a name that we're relatively familiar with. I think, I think the is it Tootin, uh, the running back? I think he runs extremely hard. Uh, I think they're really long at the offensive tackle position. I think they're pretty solid there as well. And then defensively, you know, you start with their two inside linebackers. Um, is it Taquan King and Jacob Roberts? Both make a ton of plays. Number five, uh, Mikhail, so I'm going to butcher his name, Salahuddin, uh, kind of their rover. Seems like they're adjuster. Uh, he's in the boundary, uh, he's to the field, he plays safety, he plays outside linebacker, probably an integral piece of their 4-2-5 that they play. Uh, and then they jump into smoky stuff on third down. So uh, they're going to create some challenges. Uh, got excellent team athleticism and speed. Um, it'll be a fun one, uh, a different opponent. And that's one of the exciting things about this season is, you know, we have some different people on the docket uh, and, and a couple different people coming to the Dome this year. So with that, I will open it for questions. Coach, it's a new team, but uh, does it feel a little bit more like a normal game week uh, now that you guys actually will have film on these guys from this year rather than, you know, kind of a mystery with Drake? Does it feel a little bit more normal heading into well, this week? Yeah, I, I think normal is probably a, you know, sometimes what is normal, but uh, it, it, it's more of uh, our traditional week this 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 week. Uh, we were in yesterday for, you know, for quite a while trying to, to – kind of put a bow on Drake and, and, and talk about some of the things that need improvement and some of the adjustments that need to be made going into week two and then starting our uh, kind of investigation on North Carolina A&T and who they are, what they do on both sides of the ball and special teams. And today's been very similar. Uh, we'll we'll uh, have team meetings here coming up shortly uh, and then have a, a little bit later practice tonight with like a typical week we in, in season. So I'm, I'm excited to get into a routine, probably more important. With, with that, without having school today, probably not quite a normal routine for our kids. And their quarterback, he also led the team in rushing in that last game. When you have a dual threat quarterback like that, does any pressure go on to any particular uh, position group defensively for you guys? Well, I think, you know, the thing that I noticed is he, he, a lot of his yards came in scramble situations, so it wasn't necessarily dedicated run game. Uh, he escapes through his arm. Uh, so we need to do a great job of understanding if we're if we're pressuring from the left or uh, you know if, if if we're the left side of the defensive line we got to do a great job of of you know leveling our rush at his level we can't run by and let this thing become ten on eleven so I, I think there are things we'll address as we come up with a game plan and and ways to attack him from a protection standpoint but also trying to get the ball out of his hands quickly. Apples, did you guys yeah. take take a look at him and? Uh, that, yeah, I think he was a class of 21. Uh, Cole, uh, Cole Payton was, was our emphasis. No, know exactly who he is. Uh, probably had him work out. I think I remember even watching him work out at North High School. So, um, you know, he, he does a great job, very talented young man. And I think he made the decision to go to North Carolina AT relatively early in the process. Can I describe what you saw out of the kicking game on Saturday, evaluation there between Griffin and Will? Uh, you know, uh, okay. I think there's some room for improvement. I thought Griff did a nice job with the PATs, got the ball up quick. Uh, we gave Will the opportunity to, to try to hit that short one from a tight angle, and uh, I think he allowed the angle to uh, influence the space between his ears probably a little more than it should have. Uh, you know, we, we kick from that angle all the time in practice, um, but it was his first opportunity of the year, and I think he probably put some internal pressure on himself. Uh, we had to do a better job on kickoffs. We had the one that was out of bounds and just, we can't kick the ball down the middle of the field. Then you have to defend all 53 and a third. So uh, Steiny knows that. Uh, he, he's, he's been around long enough in our program and especially in our special teams uh, to know that if, if we're going to directional kick, he's got to hit his spots. 
think having the opening touchdown last game, what are you going to do this week looking forward to be able to prevent that jumping ahead by North Carolina and team? Well, we, we need to play better early. And if that means that we need to have a little more energy early in the, in the contest, maybe we need to just not come out and, 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 and play passive or try to evaluate what the offense is, is going to do, but maybe be a little bit more aggressive in our calls. Uh, regardless of, of what side of the football we're on. But we need to lean on our leadership a little bit as well. We got 14 great seniors that uh, some of them caught me right after the game and said they were frustrated about the first the first 14 or so plays, 20 plays of the game that we just you know, kind of walked into the game rather than aggressively approached it. And so I think as, a, as the head coach, I can address some things probably that morning to make sure people are, are locked in. But we're also going to do some good on good this week too, early in practice, trying to set the tempo for that day's uh, execution and energy levels. Back spot three, Stubby Ors. I mean, would you like to settle into starters at the middle and outside backer spots, or is that something that could be an or for, you know, and I the think, future? You know, I, th I think it could be continue to be an or. Uh, I think we have a pretty good idea who's going to be out there right away with us this week. But, um, you know, it, it's still, it's early. Uh, you're only talking about a, a small sample size of, of plays. And, you know, before you just dive in and, and name an in, one individual a starter, I think we want to make sure that we're, we're doing our due diligence. Uh, we have four young men that do a pretty good job out there. Uh, all of them played well. Um, there's some things that I think because of experience, they'll naturally get better at this week just because it's their, it'll be their second opportunity to play this year. Split to load last week. What can you say about their performance and what we might see this week? I hope you see the same exact thing. Um, I hope we can play as many as we can. Uh, we try to limit reps. Uh, we try to encourage our players to have a, a, an attitude of being great without the ball. And sometimes that's easier said than done when you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. Uh, it takes a probably a unique person uh, to be willing to, to be great at pass pro, to be great at blocking. Uh, to be great at maybe a play action fake when uh, they know in the back of their mind they don't have the football in their hand. That's a that's a position where you want guys who want the football, but you also want guys who are all about the team. And I think we got eight or so guys in that room uh, that do a tremendous job. A lot of them are on special teams as well. Uh, you go back and look. Uh, Owen Johnson had a couple big carries late in the game, but did a great job on kickoff cover for us to the point where we're maybe trying to find a spot for him. Uh, Bree Capinu just just scratching the surface of what he can do. Um, so I, I'm excited about the room. I hope we can continue to use that number because uh, it's it's a it's a long season and it's a physical conference uh, schedule that we have ahead of us. They are moving into the CAA next year. They've scheduled this game to better competition a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. Describe that they want to they want to move into out of the Celebration Bowl and be a team that's routinely considered for the FCS playoffs. Yep. Well, you, you've seen you know, just in some crossover film, they're starting to play more and more teams like that. Uh, you know, when they were part of it was the Big South, uh, they were playing Monmouth already, who's now another member of the CAA. So I'm sure it's a, a transition that they feel like they're uh, getting prepared for. Uh, they, from a talent standpoint, they have a ton of talent. Uh, they, they got some kids that, that look great, that can get off the football. Uh, I think they play well up front, offensive line-wise. You don't see a lot of, you know, Opponents getting turned loose, so I think they're well coached. I think they play extremely hard, and uh, that's what's going to make it an exciting game for us. Receivers, you said you got a lot of young players you like. What's the challenge of trying to evaluate these guys in games where you're probably not throwing the ball too much and kind of wading through the right? Well, you gotta, you're going to lean on a lot of your practice film then and, and things. I mean, we we do a lot of things in practice that sometimes don't get utilized in a game just due to the situation or or how the game is unfolding, but. Um, that's probably where a lot of our evaluation is going to take place is, you know, just what is the skill set that each, each receiver has? How can we utilize them? How can we personnel to get them in the right spot? Uh, some guys are really good at, at running the football. Some just, you know, that, that's not their cup of tea. We have outside receivers, inside receivers. And uh, I, I think our, our staff, Coach Pauly, Coach Roll, do a really good job of trying to, you know, find as many ways to use those kids as possible. Is after the fact here? No. I, I think we're good. Um, of course, we'll have a little more uh, intel this afternoon. Uh, training room's probably heating up right now uh, after this afternoon's lift. A call on Saturday night, Peyton. Um, anything after watching film, good or bad, that you want to comment on? I that? thought he did a really good job of just the uh, the logistics of all of it, getting the call, getting to the side, getting to the 
uh, getting the call to the, in the huddle, um, communication piece, uh, adjusting some things uh, at the line of scrimmage, uh, probably some things from route standpoint that could have been cleaner um, with, with some of our players that were in the game. Um, you know, I know that one, he, he threw that snag and kind of had a get, got double jerked by the wide receiver. The receiver kept moving rather than sitting down. Um, I, I think that all comes with experience and not only his experience, but also the other 10 guys that were on the field at that time. So whatever we were able to get with, we had 80 plus players play on Saturday. And so, and I'm never going to apologize for how many kids we play, uh, you know, at some point, those guys are going to have to be starters, going to have to be critical pieces to our program. And the more reps we can get early in this year, the better off for us. So it, this is going to pay dividends down the road for him. Uh, just knowing that he was going to have multiple series back to back, getting on the phone with Coach Hedberg, going through the whole process of, of what it was like to be the starting quarterback, I think will, will really be good for him as he moves forward, especially in his preparation. Played describe true freshman. Yep. What about what did you see through camp or even through the first week to say to give him a, a to pull that in play? Well, he's done a really good job. Plays with great pad level. He's about 260 pounds. Probably not where we want him physically, but felt like you know he had shown some some bright spots, uh, some suddenness. Uh, picked up what we were doing defensively. We did some NDSU, NDSU young guy stuff, and Logan was one of those names that just continually was always talked about afterwards. Uh, had four or five snaps and really played with great pad level. Um, was it perfect? No, but uh, I know Coach Gazer was super excited about the group that was out there at the end of the game. He was, you know, Cole Menz played 20 snaps for us, young man from Cheyenne, uh, and, and did some really good things. And, and so uh, Cody Huseman, Jackson Dutton Heffer, um, th there was a, a pretty young D-line, pretty young defensive line out there at one point, and I think you're probably looking at what you know, our D-line is going to, you know, maybe foreshadowing what it looks like two years from now or, or a year from now. Just a little off the subject that Joe Haig signed today at the Browns. Now, you, know, you got 15 former players in yep. the practice squad on the roster. What, what does that mean to see that success from the program afterwards? And as a coach, how much can you follow that during the season? Well, I probably don't do a very good job of following it during the season. I've tried to connect with most of our players prior to or when the announcement came off came out either making the 53 or the practice squad. Uh, I'm super excited for Joe, uh, you know, to get another three-year contract. Uh, sounds like this is a, a better contract than what he even had with Pittsburgh. Uh, my only frustration, it's with the Browns and, and, and it, it, it's within the, the, the division, but uh, I'll, I'll overlook that and I'll, when, when I talk to him next, I'll make sure I let him know. So I was on top of the world for last year. I mean, we had two guys in that were Steelers. Things couldn't have got any better. You know, now I don't have any, but uh, uh, it is what it is. I'm you know, to have 15 guys in the league, I think, says a lot about the development piece. Uh, we got kids who come here for the right reason. They want to work hard. Uh, Coach Kramer does an outstanding job of putting on the right weight. Um, I think I made the comment to you guys earlier this year, the, uh, a scout from the Bears was in and made the comment that if, if you put our uniform, uniforms on your guys, it, we'd look the same. You guys are big, long, and lean. You, you don't have any bad body kids out here. And I think that, that has to do with Coach Kramer, his staff, our nutrition staff, who do an unbelievable job, our, our, our medical staff, who stay on top of these guys and help them kind of navigate uh, their college experience. Do the NFL thing on your locker room wall there. I mean, yep. I, I, I thought that was good. I thought we needed to. I mean, it was, it was uh, in conjunction with the athletic department. Uh, but I think it's something that we should celebrate. Uh, you know, we, we have we have a ton of guys who who go through this program and graduate and go on and do great things. But uh, when you talk about playing in the NFL, I mean, there's X number of play, you're you're the best in the world, uh, and we're fortunate. We have two starting court, two of the top 32 quarterbacks in in all of the world playing in the NFL. So um, I think it's something that we should celebrate. Uh, anyone who's competitive and, and the young men that we recruit. In the, they may not say it, but everyone's in the back of their mind is thinking about, you know, how can I get to the NFL at some point? That's what these yeah, kids I'm watch. Saying, you're you're reemphasizing with your team to watch college football after what happened on Saturday? Oh. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to have a little uh, presentation today. Uh, Dom, you're more than welcome if you'd like to come. Uh, we're going to watch some things. Uh, I'm going to give them a quick education on uh, rule number 9.2 or 9-2. Uh, some people call it the Miami rule. Uh, I think it was imposed in 1991 after their fourth national championship, right around the time I was playing. So 
uh, we're going we're gonna to go back in time a little bit and sh- show them where this thing started. But, it, yeah, at this, it's funny you bring that up. First thing I got home Saturday night, my dad called me over. He was, at the, he was at home, and he goes, Matt, take it easy on that defensive lineman who scored a touchdown. He goes, I remember you having a couple interceptions in your career, and probably were a little excessive in your celebration too. So um, it was good to hear my dad tell me that. So we'll, we'll educate. I, I probably will we'll use it as a learning experience. Not very often D-line. I, I blame Coach Buddha. I called him today and said, well, what the heck were we teaching Will Mostart down there at DN play? More of an emphasis this year, is it not, by the it's, officials? Does well, it seem like it? I think it's the same. But, yeah, it, it is what it is. I, I'm, those, those are some things we got to be smart about. I, I get the emotion took over. Not very often does a defensive tackle get a score a touchdown. Um, so we're, we're, we're going we're gonna to learn from it and move on.